From the Toronto studios, this is Muslim News on Muslim Network TV. Assalamu alaikum, this is Saleh Farooq. First, let's begin with the headlines. 25 states sue the Biden administration over mask mandates for kids in Head Start. Gun purchases have almost doubled in the United States, a study reveals. China sanctions the U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom Leaders over Xinjiang. Nigerian Muslim girls are exposed daily to humiliation due to the hijab. The pandemic will end when vaccine inequity ends, the WHO chief has said. And our top story tonight. 25 U.S. states are suing the Biden administration over mask mandates and vaccine requirements for Head Start programs. Louisiana Attorney General Jeff Landry on Tuesday called those mandates overreaching and will cost jobs and impede child development. The lawsuit was filed in response to new rules issued by the Biden administration last month. The U.S. Department of Health and Human Services is requiring Head Start employees, contractors, and volunteers to be vaccinated by the end of January. Gun purchases are rising in the United States, according to a new study. More than 5 million people became first-time gun owners between January of 2020 and April 2021. This compared to 2.4 million adults in 2019. The research was conducted by Northeastern University and published in the Annals of Internal Medicine. About half of new gun owners were women and nearly half were people of color. A recent fight involving a student at Fairfax High School in Virginia started as a hate crime, her attorney had said. The 16-year-old Black Muslim American sophomore claimed that she was assaulted when she tried to report Islamophobic and racist comments to her teachers. Abed Ayoub, the legal director of the American Arab Anti-Discrimination Committee representing the girl, said that Fairfax police were premature in ruling out hate crime charges. He said that after the fight, his client spent the evening in the emergency room and that police were given medical reports showing contusions and bruises. Ayub said when the student went to school the next day, she was given an in-school suspension, which she served in the same room as her attacker. Thousands of federal inmates released from prison during the pandemic to complete their sentences from home will be allowed to remain in home confinement. The Justice Department move was a preventative measure to combat the spread of COVID-19. Since March of 2020, the Federal Bureau of Prisons has replaced more than 36,000 inmates in home confinement, according to the agency's website. More than 25,000 have completed their sentences, while 7,700 remain in home confinement. A three-judge panel Tuesday blasted the United States government's suggestion that the Jabril family book another flight and face invasive searches to find out if they are on the watch list. The family filed a lawsuit against the Transportation Security Administration and Department of Homeland Security alleging Fourth and Fifth Amendment violations. Mohamed Jabril, a U.S. citizen of Jordanian national origin, his wife Aida, and five children were set to take a flight in 2018 to Jordan. Jabril was separated from his wife and children, and each was searched without their consent or warrant, according to the lawsuit filed in federal court. China has blacklisted four members of the United States Commission on International Religious Freedom Tuesday. It is China's latest response to Washington's sanctions targeting alleged perpetrators of genocide in Xinjiang. China's treatment of Muslim minority Uyghurs living in Xinjiang has worsened diplomatic relations between Western powers and Beijing. 
The U.S. has issued sanctions on a growing list of Chinese politicians and companies, as well as a diplomatic boycott of the upcoming Winter Olympics. Beijing's foreign ministry sanctioned the U.S. CIRF chairwoman Nadine Manza, vice chairman Nuri Turkel, as well as commissioners Anurima Baragava and James W. Carr. They are also barred from entering China. Their assets have also been frozen in mainland China, Hong Kong, Macau, spokesperson Zhao Linjian had told reporters. Female Muslim students in Nigeria are exposed daily to humiliation and persecution in Lagos public schools over the use of their hijab, according to Muslim Rights Concern. The group have asked the Lagos state government to issue a circular on the permissibility of using hijab in public schools. Its request stems from incidents in the state's public schools in which some teachers maltreat Muslim female students who use the hijab. The group director, Professor Ishak Akintola, made the demand in a statement Tuesday. 54% of Nigerians are Muslims. Sri Lankan poet and teacher Ahnef Jazim, who has been detained for more than 18 months, was released on bail on December the 15th. The judge still had harsh conditions imposed on him. The 25-year-old was detained under Sri Lanka's Draconian Prevention of Terrorism Act. Muslim and Tamil minorities in Sri Lanka continue to face major human rights violations. Israeli forces on Tuesday demolished a house belonging to a Palestinian family for allegedly being unauthorized in Nahalin village of Bethlehem in the occupied Palestinian territories. Homeowner Atif El Nis spoke to reporters after the demolition operation. Israeli soldiers also attacked Palestinian residents who protested the destruction of the house. Israel routinely denies Palestinians building permits. It is a part of what Human Rights Watch calls an apartheid regime methodology of discrimination against Palestinians. Fatima Jassim is facing a new challenge in her makeshift tent in Idlib's Zafir camp, where she took shelter after fleeing the war. Incessant rains have wrecked not only Jassim's tent, but also the shelters of more than 3,700 Syrian refugees in the surrounding villages. Rain and flooding hit the refugee camps in northwest Syria, affecting tens of thousands of people. Families fleeing the civil conflict, which began in early 2011 when Syrian President Bashar al-Assad's regime repressed pro-democracy protests, are living in makeshift tents in Idlib. More than 500 tents have become unusable, Mohammed Halaj, Syria Emergency Response Coordinator, told the Endalu Agency. At least 3,700 families have been affected by the rains and 2,145 families' tents have been damaged by floodwaters, he said. Muhammad Yusuf Islahi, a prominent Islamic scholar and founder of several educational institutes, died Tuesday at Fortis Hospital Noida in India after a short illness. He was 93 years old. Islahi wrote more than 100 books in Urdu, but he reached an audience speaking different languages and cultures. Born in Pakistan, he chose to serve Indian Muslims. The World Health Organization has warned that the COVID-19 pandemic will not end until the unequal distribution of vaccines between rich and poor countries ends. The WHO chief Tedros Adhanom said that the world is still in the grips of a pandemic that shows no signs of going away. He said that more than 3.3 million people have lost their lives to COVID-19 in 2021. That accounts for more deaths than from HIV AIDS, malaria, and tuberculosis combined. He added that it is likely people who are vaccinated or who have recovered from COVID-19 could be infected or reinfected. 
Coming up next after the break is our in-depth analysis segment, so stay tuned, and we will be right back after these messages. If I could be you, and you could be me for just one hour. If we could find a way to get inside each other's minds. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. Well, before you abuse, criticize and accuse. Walk a mile in my shoes. There are 16 million children struggling with hunger in America. That's one in five daughters, sons, neighbors, and classmates who don't know where their next meal is coming from. Yet billions of pounds of good food go to waste every year. It's time we do something about it. Feeding America is a nationwide network of food banks that helps provide meals to millions of kids and families in need. Visit feedingamerica.org to help them feed even more. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. Our fellow Americans, Right now, the COVID-19 vaccines are available to millions of Americans. And soon, they will be available to everyone. The science is clear. These vaccines will protect you and those you love from this dangerous and deadly disease. They could save your life. So we urge you to get vaccinated when it's available to you. That's the first step to ending the pandemic and moving our country forward. It's up to you. I am what hunger looks like in America. I am an eight-year-old girl who's not excited for the last day of school. Because this may be the last time I'll have lunch. Till September. I am a single father of two who works three part-time jobs. And that's still not enough to put food on the table. I was created by artificial intelligence from faces of the one in eight Americans who struggle with hunger. Feeding America, 200 food banks strong. Welcome back. For our in-depth analysis segment, let's go to Imam Abdul Malik Mujahid. Over to you, Imam Mujahid. Winter is coming and projections are really troublesome. Europe is slated to get 500,000 deaths by February 2020. Sorry, 2022. And in the United States, already infections are picking up. So where the world is heading, there is someone who is keeping an eye on these things. And this is a professor of the University of Washington, Dr. Ali Mokhtar. Welcome to Muslim Network TV. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Thank you for having me, Braz. Uh, professor, this uh, winter is coming and infection in the United States is picking up. So what, uh, how, how this winter is projected to be like? Now projecting about 120,000 deaths between now uh, and uh, March 1st. And if 95% of Americans wear a mask, we are projecting 69,000 deaths left. So it's very important for all of us to remember that vaccines and masks will save our lives. Yes, we are projecting a surge right now. It will peak in uh, mid-January in terms of infections, mortality will peak the first week of February and it will start coming down slowly after that. So you're thinking of the holiday season, people will be careless and it will contribute and winter is already there. So you expect it to peak in January. So what numbers we are looking at on the daily basis in January? We're looking right now at our peak in terms of mortality, about 1,100 deaths a day when we peak. We will have less mortality this winter than what we have seen last summer and last winter simply because more people are vaccinated and the vaccines are highly effective against hospitalization and mortality, less effective without a booster or a short dose against infection. And that's why you see a rise in cases in many states that have high vaccination rate because simply the people who received their vaccine in these states were early adopters of the vaccination campaign and they received their vaccine by April. And now we have a waning immunity among those people unless they get a booster. 
So booster, is there any campaign for people to really focus on booster? I mean, uh, people uh, who have taken vaccine, they're taking it easy. I mean, I was, I was in a function just uh, last weekend. There were 800 people and hardly anybody with masks. No, that's not, not a good strategy. Let me explain it briefly. We have plenty of evidence right now that after six months of receiving your second dose, your immunity goes down against infection to about 20%, especially from Pfizer. It's a little bit higher in terms of if you are using Moderna. So it's very important for all of us to remember that fully vaccinated should be defined not two doses, but three doses right now. And that's what we do with all other vaccination. For many of us, we have two measles right now for our children, two measles doses. We have three DTP, three doses. We have two shingle doses. I mean, it's very important for us to remember this is a novel virus. The data right now and the science right now is telling us we need three shots to be fully protected, not two shots. What are the chances that uh, Moderna and Pfizer people will come back and say, well, every year you need to have three shots? It's very possible. Look at the flu. Uh, we take a shot every year. Look at the Spanish flu pandemic right now, H1N1. It's still circulating and we need to take a vaccine for flu every year. So it's very possibility for all of us to be prepared. And many countries, by the way, right now in Europe, for example, England is preparing itself to provide a yearly vaccination for COVID-19. Professor Mokhtad, uh, one question troubles me is that in Europe, your projection which World Health Organization in Europe uh, has been talking about is by February, they will have a half a million deaths. And Europe is more vaccinated than the United States. Exactly. So what's happening right now in Europe, it's very important to remind everybody. Yes, many countries in Europe have a higher vaccination rate than we do here have in the United States. So that's very true. But also they have the same problem that we are facing, waning immunity. Many of their people received their vaccine more than six months ago, and they are in a need of a booster in order to protect themselves from infection. So you'll see a rise in infections in Europe, but we're not seeing a proportional rise in mortality simply because the vaccines are highly effective for protection against hospitalization and mortality. Also what's happening in Europe, in many countries right now, they're reversing it. Mobility increased and mask wearing went down. And that's why you see a combination of behavior, waning immunity and seasonality of the virus. We're coming into winter. All of us are moving indoors, no more fresh air. The virus is more likely to be spreading indoors among people who are taking off their mask, sitting around the dinner table. That's why you see the surge in Europe. What's important to remember when you see a surge in Europe, what we have seen throughout this pandemic, they're ahead of us like three weeks. Whatever happens in Europe is going to happen here, given the conditions are the same. So look at the United States right now. We have high vaccination rate in many place, places, but we have a waning immunity problem. Mobility is very high. In many states right now, mobility is similar or even higher than what you used to have pre-COVID-19. And mask wearing in the United States is about 32%. Unfortunately, we're entering into winter with the holiday season and all the mobility and activities around the holidays, we're expecting a surge. So do you expect um, another series of lockdown and the mandate that uh, people cannot gather publicly and the congregations will be stopped and things like that? I don't think so. Like, I mean, countries do not have any more an appetite for mandates. So what they are trying to do right now is having a mandate to basically encourage people to get the vaccine. You can't get into a restaurant without showing a proof of vaccination. And that's what many European countries are doing. And when all of these are failing, some European countries right now, they have a curfew at night. You know, Netherlands uh, is already starting a curfew at night. So some countries are doing this on a geographic location, but not at the national level, because there is a balance between livelihood and between lives. And in many countries, as you know, they are suffering economically and they can't afford to shut down. Professor Mokhtad, uh, you know, this pandemic death have been around all over, but the way it happened in India was extremely unique. 
And uh, it seems like a tsunami of deaths uh, and people were unable to even bury their people or cremate their people as Hindus do. And they were throwing bodies left and right. Now, BBC report says that uh, they have identified a gene which makes uh, South Asians more susceptible to this virus. What are your thoughts about that? Uh, I disagree. I don't think it's genetic. If you look at what happened in India because of the Delta variant, India, take for example, Delhi. And Delhi, before Delta hit, they had about 67% of people infected already. And they felt they're safe. They've been infected, so they can keep going, doing our businesses as usual. And what happened, Delta arrived, and Delta was more infectious, and Delta is an escape variant. Even if you've been exposed and got COVID-19 before, Alpha variant or other variants, you were infected. So it really spread so fast in India. But when you look at India, for example, compare it to Bangladesh and Pakistan, we didn't see that high rates of mortality in Pakistan, for example. They're similar country, they're similar genetically. Uh, same people in a way, I mean, they were one country. So I don't think it's genetic. It's simply Delta variant that has happened and hit them and hit them hard. And unfortunately, because it happened first in India, many other countries learned their lessons and they put their guards up and they were saved. And India, unfortunately, suffered a little bit more than the neighbors. Professor Mokhtad, uh... While working at this number, I mean, you deal about the numbers of infections and death and pandemic, what, 15 million people dead around the world. Do you sometimes get depressed about working on these numbers? Yes, uh, definitely. It has been very difficult. Uh, I lost also two cousins, brothers, three days apart from COVID-19 in Lebanon. So my family... uh, My nephew is not vaccinated because my family is in Lebanon and I have a family in Yemen. They don't have vaccines and they're not vaccinated. So it has been very difficult for us counting, uh, you know, number of dead and number of infected. I know from personal experience, this is a loved person, a cousin, a brother, a father. So it has been very difficult for all of us. What has made it difficult, especially after last December, quite honestly, is uh, the fact that we have a vaccine. It has been very hard on all of us and quite honestly depressing sometimes because we have a mean to prevent all these mortalities. Over 150,000 deaths in the United States were after vaccines. I mean, we could have prevented all of these deaths. It has been very difficult for us. Uh, We get our message out every day and say, please get your vaccine, get your booster, wear a mask. Nobody is listening. And it has been very difficult at a time where somebody like me, I live in a country where we have plenty of vaccine. We're lucky to have plenty of vaccines and we should use them. And I have family who's waiting in line to get a vaccine. It's very difficult on a personal level, on a human being level, as a Muslim seeing all these people dying, that I know could be prevented in the United States and elsewhere. Preventing a death is very important in our religion and our culture and our beliefs. It has been very difficult, brother. It has been very difficult. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Mokhtad, for your work. I know it's not easy, but it's rewarding. So many people get alerted and pay attention to they need to fix their act. I hope more and more people will listen that you are lucky to have a vaccine. And uh, your relatives and my relatives and millions and millions of people around the world simply don't have access to it. It's a great state indeed. Thank you so much, Professor. Thank you. And assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much. And that's all from our Toronto studios tonight. Thank you for tuning in. You can find previous episodes and more on our YouTube and Facebook pages. For more content, please keep watching Muslim Network TV or visit muslimnetwork.tv. Assalamu alaikum and good night.